Hey, this is N Squared Sports, and we're going to be talking about uh, college football overtime versus NFL football um, overtime. We sort of wanted to do a fun little video about um, just anything, nothing really specific. This was sort of a controversy this offseason, especially with the two conference championships in the NFL had overtime. We have disagreeing opinions on this. So, Nick, give me your give me your. All right. So, I love college football overtime. I really do. I love um, watching the overtime in college football. Um, there was a game last year with um, Texas A&M and LSU. They had an overtime game. Two really good college football teams. They went to, what, six or seven overtimes, I believe. It was super fun to watch. And in the NFL, you don't really get, you only get one overtime. And so that's one of the things I don't like about the NFL is once the time runs out, you just end in a tie. And I, I like for games to end. I don't like ties. I like for games to actually like just end and have a winner and a loser. So that's one big point I have for it. Another point I have for it is I love how the other team starts at the 25 yard line and have to um, just go 25 yards. In the NFL, honestly, if they changed it a little and even started like at the 50 or opposite 45 or a little bit further back, that would be cool too. I like the idea of um, having both teams having the ability to score, even if one scores a touchdown. I still like the ability for the other team to have a chance. I think in the NFL, if you score a touchdown, the game's over. And it really does put a press pressure on the opposing defense, but I still like both teams have a fair chance, but the game will still end one way or another. That's kind of what I think about it. So what about you? So... <laughs> I think that college football overtime should stay college football overtime. I will admit that college football overtime is really entertaining to watch. It's exhilarating seeing pretty much just red zone offense yeah. scoring. But that being said, I think I like the NFL overtime. I think it needs to be a little bit readjusting. Um, and to your point about it needs closure pretty much, that needs to happen. Ties shouldn't be a thing in the NFL. I think that's absurd. I wait a whole week for football. I don't want my game ending in a tie. That's just that. Yeah. Um, Ties are like for baseball teams when you're a little kid and every game ends in a tie. Like Nobody wants any pro sports mm -hmm. to end in a tie. That's mm -hmm. just, you don't want that to happen. It's, it's just not, it's unsatisfying. Yeah. That being said, College football overtime cannot be implemented into the NFL because, first of all, I'll say that college football overtime is a risk. Because you're in the red zone, you have tighter, more compact, it's more dangerous to play in. Those seven overtimes, that I'm sure those guys are hurting more than they've ever hurt in their life right there. I mean, that's dangerous to the players, and it's going to be ramped up even more in the NFL. And personally, I don't want to see more injuries. That being said, um, yeah, it's still really entertaining. I'll continue on that, in my opinion, it takes out a level of football that is still part of the game. I think you have these crucial, as you see, I'm a Texans fan, but the games against the Cowboys and the Colts this year, you had fourth down decisions that's still a part of the game that I don't believe you get as much in college football these fourth downs of whether you should punt it or not i think that's just a part of the game that you're just dismissing whenever you do these overtimes college football overtimes um another point is do both teams get a chance to score well the defense is a half of the game and they should show up the rams won the game against the saints in overtime whether you believe the controversy or not they went in overtime, and the Rams' defense showed up and stopped the Saints. And that's just that. I mean, the Rams, they went and uh, sacked uh, Drew Brees. Drew Brees, well, while being hit, threw the ball up, and it got intercepted. The defense showed up against the char or against the Chiefs in the uh, in the other conference championship game, the AFC game. I. Defense is a half the game, and it should be counted like that, and it should be respected like that. 
Okay, well then just show up during the actual game. Like if it ends in a tie and it goes to overtime, you must have not shown up in the actual game. Like I think you still have defense even in those college overtime rules. You still have defense, but you also have a chance on offense. Like it's not just, I agree there should be defense, but there still is defense. But there's defense for both sides now. So both both sides get to play defense and get to show whether they they can stop the other team or not. So I, I think that point is not really a good one because you still have defense in college over term rules. So that's my point to that. So I think that college overtime, and I'm not a big fan of college football in general. I, I like it because it's football, but not as much as the NFL. It's meant specifically for high scoring. The NF, the college football's defense is honestly quite pathetic. Um, just when you watch it, it's just more wimpy and it's just getting worse and worse to be. In okay, my that, that makes my point even more, but go ahead. But it, that means that it's just meant for high scoring games, in my opinion, and it's just leading to. Let's give them a touchdown. Let's give them a touchdown. Let's give them a touchdown. I think that when you put teams in a situation where they're having to make fourth down calls and punting it, it's it, it encapsulates the whole entire game. Okay, but still, you've still made my point even more, even better, because if college football defense is so wimpy, and then you go into an NFL, NFL team, their defense is not wimpy. So if you have a college football rule, their defense is more likely to stop the opposing team than college football teams. But then I go back to my injury point, is that injuries ramp up in yeah. the red zone. And we yeah, and so then what you do is you move it back to the 50 or so, and you have more field, more space to work with, and then you're just playing regular right football then. I think time is an is a part of the game is a part of any sport that makes the game special mm -hmm. and that's again another aspect of the game that college football just dismisses that a time management should be respected and that's a valuable part of the game and i think that if you take if you do what college football does and just say you have all the time in the world to score you could be there forever and those players can't be there forever these they need time and they need a deadline in the game. Well, then what I would say, I agree. I agree somewhat with that point. But then what you could do, you could adjust it even more. You could say, okay, we're limiting it to a certain amount of overtimes, and at the third, like if let's say it's three overtimes, you're limiting. Going into the third overtime, you have to go for two on the last last time, and if they both go to two or whatever, then go to like a kind of like in soccer, go to a penalty shootout, do something to where you have each team pick a field goal or something. I don't know. So make some roll up where it will end it there. And, I mean, I'm sure I probably – I'm just thinking off the top of my head with all the make something up, but I'm sure the NFL could make something up where they could end it at a certain time. And you still – so you know when it's going to end, unlike college football where it could never end. <laughs> so. Fair enough. I'll, I'll end on this, is that the people that will argue the games, like the Chiefs game, the Chiefs did not get robbed of a win. They lost that game fair and square, and so the defense showed up against the Rams. I mean, if the teams so that you're are... Talking, if, you're talking about the Saints right there, right? Yeah, now. Saints, Saints and the Rams. Okay. And... For the people that say that the teams of the offense always win the game, that's not the case. The Texans won, yes, they got lucky, but they won and they started on defense both times. The Packers, if I'm not mistaken, in week uh, two of the NFL, they tied. They didn't win the game when they started off with the ball. If I'm not mistaken, the Browns started off with the ball in overtime in week one. They didn't win. Either way, it was a tie. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there was more defenses that started first and won the game in the NFL this season than there had been offenses that won the game. So the argument to say that the offense that scores first is always the team that's going to win is completely wrong. Yeah, I agree with that, but I don't think that really has to do with 
the role than overtime. I don't think it, it's an advantage that people talk about is that it's that if the offense starts first, it's a, a clear win, it's an advantage. It's game well, over. and then, then you get the other point, it might not, but also you have the ratings for TV. I mean, I know how cheesy that is, and but TV ratings are important to to people in the different companies, so it might just spice it up a little bit. People might want to watch overtime more. If there is some kind of different overtime that has to do with some of the rules, if not all, because you don't need all of the college football rules. There has to be some variety, but you can make it to where you at least give both teams a shot.